Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about JavaScript skills and assessments. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do I assess how good I am at JavaScript? And the short answer is usually there are two ways. The first way is trivia questions and the second way is how well do you solve common problems within the space of JavaScript. Let me explain. So the person who asked this question had a little bit of a story. He's been working with JavaScript for several years and he just feels it seems that he's never really good at it, right? So this is a hard one for me to answer because I don't really know what those issues are. It's the, it's the thing that I would have to understand in order to be able to give a personalized answer to this sort of thing. But I can give you the answer that the vast majority of people who are hiring you are going to consider to be the thing that dictates whether or not you are good at JavaScript or you're not good at JavaScript. And as I said, the first thing is going to be trivia questions. And trivia questions are basically just, oh, if I don't know everything from what, what, what's the difference between the let keyword and the var keyword? What's the difference between an ES5 function and an ES6 function? And things of this nature, like these sorts of like academic or uh, not necessarily academic, but these sorts of language questions where you ask questions about the, the language. What does the this keyword do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These sorts of trivia questions are usually very popular because they are number one, very, very, very easy to test with. These are perfect things if you have a written test or some multi-answer questionnaire, if you're gonna do a skill assessment thing or something like that. This is the simplest thing you can possibly do. You just ask questions regarding the language and how it, wor how it functions. Now the problem with that is that although this is very useful, I don't think that, like there are some trivia questions such as like what's if you make a shallow copy versus a deep copy, like what are the impacts of this and things like that. And th these are very useful things to know about. So I can't like with a good conscience say that, oh, this is just bullshit. It's just for people who don't understand how to write code because that's not ju it's just not true. What I want to say though there is that I feel that sometimes people put a little bit too much emphasis on this. Like there are absolutely, because the thing is guys, some trivia questions are very important to kind of know about because they actually help you when you're writing software. So you're not, like, as an example, the cl cloning thing, like if you don't understand the difference between a deep clone and a shallow clone, you might introduce a bug at some point because you don't understand those differences. And that is a trivia question that is very, very important to know about. But I don't think that it's fair to say that this is a way, it's a very good way of assessing how good you are at JavaScript. It is just one thing to add to it, right? The other way I think is much more efficient. The problem with this is that it, this is a way I would say that most, uh, you, you can of course measure skill through this as well, but I think that it has to be more to do with experience and it's a much, much, much harder way to measure if someone's good at JavaScript. It's not, uh, it's a very, uh, I would suppose that it's a better way of saying that it measures how experienced someone is with JavaScript, perhaps or however you look at it. Because if we're gonna judge your JavaScript skill through how good you are at solving problems that are very common or things like that, then we're in, then we're in trickier territory. Now I wrote back to the subscriber and I said that an example of this, if I'm gonna give you a concrete example, is that state sharing within JavaScript is tricky. And when you're working within the browser, it's very tricky for you to share states. So if you're working in something like React or similar things, you may know of Redux. Now Redux is a state, it's a state management library that helps you to do this exact thing. It allows you to have multiple components that reference basically what is a singleton to get to the same singleton. And then they use a pub sub messaging system in order to dispatch that, oh, 
something changed, the state updated, and now I need to re-render the page where the value has been changed so that it reflects that to the user. This is a very, very hard problem. If you're doing this in, say, vanilla JavaScript or something like that, which was the case with this person, if you can build this from, your, from scratch or you, if you have identified that this sort of thing is a very tricky thing to solve in vanilla JavaScript, then that is an indicator that you have some skills because it's the, one of the main problems of JavaScript. It has been forever to do these sorts of SPA-like or keeping the state on the client and then making sure that you know there's dynamic updates and that these are reflected in the UI. That's one way of looking at it. Then there are other things that you can look at, like experience things that where you know that certain practices within JavaScript usually falls to shit very quickly, which is you know you have a lack of a type system or something, or perhaps you're supposed to. My favorite is to mention theming. How do you support themes in a JavaScript application or a web application where you can go between something like dark mode, like dark mode, light mode, etc., etc., or you might have people who want to be able to switch different color schemes or things like that. There are many ways to check because these are the sort of common business requirements that you will face when you're working in the industry and quite a lot of them are tricky. Theming is a very tricky to topic. The same thing goes for something like translations. It's also very tricky to, to deal with and so forth. And then you have questions like if you want to go really advanced, you can ask, you could think about stuff like how do you deal with really, really big data sets? Like how do you handle if let's say that you have a page with, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of nodes on some canvas or something like that, and all of a sudden your, your application is actually going to start slowing down because you have so much data. In Redux, this is also a problem actually in React and Redux land. It's a very tricky problem to solve, or rather it's a tricky problem if you don't know how to solve it. And then you have you can assess yourself based on how do you deal with more like uncommon use cases. Let's say that you have an I and uh, a uh, like a, an embedded page or something like that, an iframe or something like that. How do you deal with? The different, like, how do you deal with the communication between the iframe and JavaScript? That brings us into security considerations. Do you know about security? Do you inherently know what is the, what the problems of with security when it comes to JavaScript are? There are so many men and uh, guys. I will give you the this this dirty little secret. Both the trivia questions and all of these things that I've just mentioned to you, they may be something that someone's going to evaluate you on. And the problem is that these are subjective things. They are things that it's really hard for you, like, uh, or rather, what I see is that there's, a quite, there's quite a lot of people, at least on my little channel here, who will tell me that I'm an idiot or that I don't know what I'm talking about, etc., etc., because it's unfair to ask these questions and they are unrelevant and they're this and that and that. And I kind of go, yeah, that's great. Good luck with whatever, however you're going to solve this problem, because the thing is, guys, these are not my personal beliefs. They're not. I'm not saying, telling you that trivia questions is a great way of assessing your skills because I just think that that's the way it is. It is because this is something that more people than myself believe. And it's something that you will face in the industry. This is, what the, this is literally what you're going to face. Just as there are people out there who are upset with the fact that they want to get a front-end position and all of a sudden they need to f face computer science questions. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. This is the reality of this industry. The reality of this industry is that there are a range of people out there who have different backgrounds within engineering, different value systems. And if you have a computer science geek at the top of the food chain at the one company, odds are that they're going to ask you computer science questions. If you have a different sort of manager, maybe you're going to be forced to solve um, some type of other problem. You might have to build something. Or maybe you have a company that's really big on security, and then they're going to throw in a few security questions regarding JavaScript. You have no idea what the, it's, uh, it's like turning over a rock. You don't really know what you're going to face. The only thing you can go on is the range, and that is what I've just talked about. The range is everything from trivia questions up until, okay, you can actually solve concrete problems. So for you to assess how good you are comes pretty much down to how 
secure you feel in solving these sorts of common problems. And I'm very sorry to say that that comes from experience. It's very hard for a junior, apart from maybe trivia questions. If you're really good at trivia questions, that can give you an indicator as a junior. But the more experienced senior developers, apart from trivia questions, this is what they have to go on. So what I want you to take away from this is pretty much just that if you want to assess how good you are at JavaScript, the normal way people will assess you how good you are at JavaScript is, okay, how good are you at understanding the different features of the language? What, how good at, are you at trivia questions? And the other part is, okay, what sort of problems are you usually facing within JavaScript and front-end development and things of this nature? And how do we solve these sorts of problems? Have you identified them? This is something that indicates experience. And this can, as I said, be everything from that you know how to solve concrete problems within the space, or maybe you know of complicated issues that you will face that many people struggle with and have some thoughts around that. Or maybe you even know things about the workflow. How do you, uh, you might be able to say things around, okay, well, usually front-end code bases fall to shit because there's no adherence to practices and there's a li library overload, so there's too many dependencies, etc., etc. All of these things indicate that you have a good understanding of not just the language, but how you do work. And these things all are part of how different companies are going to assess how good you are at JavaScript. Have a great day.